Good morning. I don't normally do unboxing, but I'm doing this because a good friend of mine is thinking of buying this and uh, is asked what you get. And here's the box. It's a 31427 Bravo is the part number. And it is a class 411 4 CEP EMU 7106 in BR blue and grey. And here is the box. Nice box, nice heavy box like all backing boxes are. The back, simple to see. Thank you. Okay, let's open the box and see what we've got here. I don't want to damage the box. We open it. Oh dear. Now you know why I don't do unboxing on camera. And you get coach there. Coach there. Coach there. Or motorised coach, I should say, and a coach there. What you also get, I'll throw that on the floor, is you get the Backman Collectors Club, which you've all probably seen. Here, you get a set of instructions. Let's push these down a bit, move them out of the way. You get an instructions, which you can see there. Only one car is powered, as it shows you there. You can see here, it offers connecting corridors for the coaches, so if you've got nice wide bends, it shows you this here. You open the instructions up. And you can see it's all nice and clear in how you take it apart, etc. And obviously, here's the most important set of instructions is how to put the loco together. Okay, now these instructions are easy. The powered car, which you can see at the top, you know is a heavier car. Now the next one down you can see the door is right in the middle hopefully in this video four windows doors in the middle then four and then the next one isn't so you can see figuring it out to put them together if you do not have a knowledge of model railways and how they should go or real railways i should say is really really simple okay let's take them out one by one thank you Okay, we're going to take the driving car out of the box and do it without breaking it. And there it is. Slide out here, which is set piece. And with the powered car, you can see we have all the connectors and a number 46 head code board. So we take the loco out. Remove this and I'll try and show it to you and you can see, I hope, that it's a really lovely, lovely locomotive and what I'm going to do is take some pictures and post them at the end of the video so you can see all the detail for yourself of each locomotive or car. So that's the powered car done. Right, the next one is a TS with the four windows which is the next one in the line lose that so we'll pull it out simple stuff and there you go it's a single carriage corridor and as I've said I'm going to take pictures of these so at the end of the video you can look at the pictures High definition 4K and C. So that will go after that. 
Here's the next carriage, TC. And as I said, you know that's the next one because it's only got three windows, one side for the other, and it's first class. Move that out of the way. Simple stuff with the box. Pull it open. And there you go. And there's your first class car. Corridor. Really simple stuff. I hasten to add it takes a 21 pin decoder and TMC I think recommend a Lego Muffin decoder and speaker for this. So if you want to put sound in it I advise that's the way to go. Final one is a dummy end car. It's unusual for Backman to power them from the front. I've got another set and the power car is in the middle. However, we're not talking about that, we're talking about this. Here we go. Pull it out. And there you see is the other coach. And as I said, I'm going to post some videos at the end after I've run it so you can see in more detail because a high definition picture is far better to see exactly what you're getting. Thank you. Right, the way you connect these is you've got these connectors here and they may be a bit small to you see but there's little power clips there and the way you connect them with the loco upside down is with the power clips facing the table and you just push it in and it will clip in because I've done it loads of times before and there you go and you've got to make sure that it's clipped in good and tight for the electrical connections. Now what you do is the second time you support this, you don't push back on it otherwise you're going to break it and you just support it gently with the top both together and be careful with the locos, do not can I have a screwdriver please, a small screwdriver flat headed, flat head small, not too small and you just gently push have I broken it? No of course I haven't and you push it in but you do not put pressure on the coaches and you can see here that's it, the old little bit of fun to do and that's that connected up. I'm just going to have one more go at this yep yeah, that's fine and that's how you connect them up and for everyone I'll show you again if I can, you've got the little power connectors here with the carriages down, roof on the table you have the power, you have the power connectors and you gently push in now you can either use a small pair of pliers or a screwdriver and in it goes simple as that and as I say you're careful not to put pressure onto the, the actual sprung coupling otherwise you will break it there you go it's an easy thing to do but for connection to the track I connect one of these in now I'm just checking that they're all powered they are because sometimes the middle one is a dummy on these so I'm going to push this in now and there we go I know I'll connect that when we've got all four on the track. Okay, here's our maiden run of our 411 and away we go. Let's see what it does. And action. And we've got to stop it and run it the other way please. What we're going to do is we're going to run it with the with the carriage pushing and the carriage pulling. Well, so far so good. Just let it run, please. Okay, well all the carriages have lights and we can see them, however they're not that bright. I suggest that these would be a lot brighter running them with 18 volts and digital. 
But they're okay, it runs nice. Okay, we're going to test this on different points. And here you have locomotive first. Pico three-way point, straight through, nice wide bend, streamlined point. And we're going to pull it through, locomotive pushing. As you can see that was quite easy. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to move it through slightly tighter. Again a Pico streamlined curve point but on the other part of the point. That's nice and tight there, you can see that is tight. There's no problem there. And we're going to pull it through the other way. Locomotive pushing. And you can see that's a little bit of walk in the park. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put it over on a bit on a bit of a tighter piece of track here, but first of all we're going to have to create that. So that's locomotive pulling. I'm going to change the other point. And we're going to pull it back. Locomotive pushing. That is a radius 3, the first one. And we go forward again. It's not running yet, so the up motor is going to have to take a little bit of time. And you can see that it's absolutely fine. And the crucial tester. is the radius 2, so I'm going to have to change the points here and there and we're going to run it on the radius 2 so this is locomotive pushing, worst part of my track radius 2, curve point, awful points and that's locomotive pushing it's a little bit wider at the other end and we go through again this is locomotive pulling. I'm going to do it again because this is the worst part of my track. Locomotive pushing. And we'll do it once more locomotive pulling. So you can see over all different types of track and that is the worst you're going to get on my track. Absolute doddle. These are in service from 1956 to 2005 and they were third rail powered electrical units. In real life they made 133 of these units. These in real life had a top speed of 90 miles per hour. These were made between 1956 and 1963. These were normally four car passenger units but some of them were complemented by a buffet car in real life. These are Pico Streamline points, I do not have any set track crossovers to test it on, I got rid of them all, sorry. Anybody who travelled in the South East, i.e. Crawley, Hawley, Red Hill will remember these. In East Livery and Network South East Livery. Here we are, a nice panorama of it going through. Here we are going through streamline points again.
and you can see that's quite easy. It's running nice. We found it's been a little bit jerky in places, but like here, but it's getting better the more we run it, so I suggest that's just a case of running it in. It was a little jerky around here, but you can see it's getting a lot better and we're pushing. These locomotives were all built at Eastley and as I say, the locomotive is pushing. It's getting better down there. As I say, as we're running it in, it's starting to run a lot, lot better. And can you stop the loco and bring it round in the other direction across there, please, so people can see. And loco first. I say loco first, that means the driving car. Now what I will, a little bit faster please, and what I will say about this is for a backman it's taken more running in than any of the others we've had. You can see here, nice panorama. And as I say, we're running in at the moment, and you really do need to. There we go, it's coming through. Perfect. Okay, well, this is loco first, and you're going to see that it's going to come down and go straight round the bend, and we're going to leave it running. There you go. And if you can change the point, please. And close C31. Close C3, well done. And next we're going to take it straight down the track. So you're seeing it going over all different types of track and points. And here we go, and I'll focus on the loco and follow it down. Perfect. And next time you're going to see it so open C34. The points cross over C32. You're going to see it cut across you now through streamlined points. It's nice and easy. To follow the loco down the track with the focus. And next time it's going to go past the pond. So C32, close it. C22, oh, that's it. Perfect. And now you're going to see it just go straight down past the pond. And I'll follow the loco with the focus, and there you've seen it deal with different track. Okay, we're doing the same thing, but running it in the other direction for you. You can see that's nice and easy. And can you close C22? C22, can you change it please? C36, can you change it please? And do C32, please. And there you go, and we're going to bring it up here. Let's focus on the low car, and here we go, straight through the points crossover. Perfect. And can you close C32? Can you change? Here, here, look at me, C12, please. No, no, please, and C34, please. Well done, and there we go. Super duper. Thank you. Here we are going through one of the few set track points we have on our model railway, and this is locomotive pushing. Can you do it a little bit slower next time, please? And bear in mind we're running in here. A little bit slower. It is getting a lot, lot better. I don't know why this has taken so much running in. They don't normally. And this is really tight here by our railway standards. You can see that was easy. Okay, here's another set track point, which is locomotive pushing. 
which is quite easy as you can see and do you want to stop it please and bring it back locomotive pulling please here we go easy here we are going through another set track point and you can see it's absolutely fine. OK, here's a stability test of the loco. Can you wind it up slowly to her at top speed? And this is loco pulling. Lights are nice and bright now. Is that flat out yet? And here we are, that's pretty much flat out. We leave it, that's fast enough. And you can see it's running absolutely fine. That's not going to come off the track. And can you slow it down, please? Slowly and run it in the other direction. Always with these, slow them down slowly. If you've got drive shafts in there and you just suddenly stop it, you risk snapping them with the inertia, like any other train, but real life as well. And we're going to run it now, loco pushing, and we're going to give it some welly, and we'll see how stable it is. The engine was making a few strange noises when we first got it, but that stopped. I think it's a case of running it in, and can you give it some welly please? And you can see there's no jerking, there's no stuttering. And remember it's a loco pushing. And I think that's fast enough. I think we're making our point there. And if we can slow it down please. Thank you for watching. And I hope you've enjoyed our test of 3147427 Bravo, a class 411 EMU. As I say, I'm going to scan the uh, instructions and you'll see those. And you'll see some close-up pictures after the video's finished. So you can see the detail of the loco. Again, thank you very much for watching. As you can see here is how to take the loco apart. Here is how you connect the cars up and where you put the chip. And here is some pictures of the various carriages. To sum up, this took a lot more running in than many other locos. However, I think it's a fantastic locomotive. And from TMC, as of the 13th of the 2nd, 2023, they're selling them for near enough half price. In my opinion... It's rude not to be really happy with it. What I would add is I suggest the interior lights and lighting would be better running in digital rather than analogue. Simply because you're getting 18 volts rather than 12. Thank you for watching and I hope you have enjoyed this video.